میں اپنے مہمان خصوصی کی طرف آؤں گا میرے مہمان خصوصی پاکستان تحریک انصاف کے تحت چلنے والے جو چار تھنک ٹینکس ہیں ان کے سربراہ کی حیثیت سے یہاں موجود ہیں ہماری خوش قسمتی ہے کہ انہوں نے اپنے قیمتی وقت میں سے ہمارے لیے بھی وقت نکالا یہ ہمیں آج پاکستان تحریک انصاف کی جو پالیسیز بن رہی ہیں اگر ہمیں حکومت ملتی ہے انشاءاللہ اس کے بارے میں بتائیں گے اس کی ڈیولپمنٹ کے بارے میں بتائیں گے ہم لوگ کیسے اس عمل کا حصہ بن سکتے ہیں اس کے بارے میں بتائیں گے ان کا ایک بہت خاص کام جیسے اسد نے بھی ابھی مینشن کیا پاکستان تحریک انصاف کے پہلے سو دن کا منصوبہ ہے جو ہمارے نزدیک بہت اہم ہے کیونکہ یہی منصوبہ پی ٹی آئی کی حکومت کے آئندہ لاہے عمل کا تعین کرے گا ان الفاظ کے ساتھ کہ افراد کے ہاتھوں میں ہے اقوام کی تقدیر افراد کے ہاتھوں میں ہے اقوام کی تقدیر ہر فرد ہے ملت کے مقدر کا ستارہ جناب محمد فروز خان صاحب بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آسم صاحب پریزیڈنٹ این کبھی اوان صاحب وائس پریزیڈنٹ این فرقان صاحب جنرل سیکیٹری این زائد خان صاحب فائننس سیکیٹری این اسد صاحب کوڈینیٹر آئی آر ڈیو آفیس بیررز آف پی ٹی آئی لیڈیز این جنٹمن این اسپیشلی آئی لائک ٹو مینشن دی میڈیا جیو این سیون ایٹی سکس ٹی وی دی ہیئر آئی ایم آنرڈ and I am touched uh, by all of you taking the time out to come here and uh, from a beautiful, gorgeous Sunday like this, which you guys hardly ever have. So it's a big sacrifice. So I do understand that and thank you. With this, we'll start out. What I think the format we should keep is, first of all, I would like to know this, that are there any people who do not understand Urdu at all? so that I stick to English, or if you feel like we will go mixed bag, which is what a desi way is. <laughs> so uh, what would you like? A mix? Is there anybody who doesn't understand Urdu at all? Gozara ho jayega? Lady there is all right. Oh, wonderful. Acha ji. You know what we will do is we will, I'm not here to lecture you guys. I'm here to share ideas. I'm here to inform what we are doing back there and how we can uh, synergize our efforts and your efforts for changing Pakistan from what it is to where we want to be. So I think basically let me repeat the vision for Pakistan of PTI. So PTI vision says that we want to establish Pakistan into a modern, democratic, Islamic welfare state. Now, aap mein se wo log jo thoda baat economic se waqif hain, you know ke each and every word democratic or welfare and then Islamic and all these, these are very, very serious words. And there could be books written and PhDs awarded and several PhDs awarded for each word of that. So this is how I translate it for you guys. I, I wish we could make Pakistan into a country where all of you sitting here do not have to be here for two reasons. One is out of fear, law and order, risk to your lives and your loved ones' lives. And the second is your economic exigencies. If you had a country in Pakistan which did not give you any fear and your life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness was intact there, and then your economic exigency was also not forcing you to immigrate. If we could make a Pakistan like that, then that is the vision for you guys, for Pakistan. And that is what it translates. So I want to put it in the right context for what it is for me. We are all human beings. We love our country. However, we also always think, what is it in this? for me. So 
let me start by, by saying where we are. I don't want to waste too much time on this. We all know that we are in a very uh, dilapidated, very corrupt, uh, extremely inefficient uh, Pakistan today. I dare say that I don't think that a rare combination of highest corruption and the lowest capability and capacity to govern would ever exist, ever. I hope so. This is my that Pakistan this combination governance. And I'm sure that you guys would agree with me. Do you agree with me on that? <laughs> so this is where we are. Now, where do we want to be? Where we want to be is what I explained. And out of free will, if we want to live in UK or USA or Bahrain or Dubai or anywhere we want to be, we should be able to. And the point I was trying to make was simply because of that our country does not allow us, our passport is not uh, respected enough. There are not enough jobs for us. There is no egalitarianism there. Those are the reasons for which I hope we never have to leave. And that's where we are all in it as a team to work as to why and how, why we got there, and what do we do now to make that Pakistan a good Pakistan. What we have done is, in, as far as uh, the, can you go to that uh, structure? What we have done in Pakistan, and let me give you a slight little background of mine. I'm a simple mechanical engineer. I um, had a bachelor's from NED and then uh, Masters from University of California a long time ago. I don't know if you guys heard or not. I've been very involved in a lot of other social activities. I was founding director of Special Olympics Pakistan. I was on the board of Karachi American School and was also president there. I was also the uh, convener of automotive industry in which we wrote the indigenization deletion programs and we made Pakistan what it is, Jomehran Suzuki Gadi hai. If we had not done those efforts, so we did all that. However, that is not enough. And I also want to tell you very frankly to the younger generation here that I am ashamed on behalf of my generation. And I want to apologize to you to where we started from and what kind of Pakistan we have brought it to be. I'm 63 and Pakistan is 65. And I think we really, guys, we have done you a big disfavor. It is generation older than me and my generation put together. Who now, whosoever is under 30, for you guys to have a country which is in such dire and bad state. So that is where I'm coming from. I am not coming from any arrogance. I'm not coming from any conceit. And as I said, once I'm through with it, what we would like to do is we would like to have an interactive session in which we will talk. We will listen to each other seriously. We will see how our country needs us. What should we do? So only about a year and a half ago, I have never been in any political party in my life. The thing that I did the most as an engineer, I asked myself a question, how could I contribute to my country? So seven years ago, I started this activity about 10 years ago, but seven years ago under Adam Motor Company, I designed my team, and I and my team designed a car, and we launched a first Pakistani designed car. And the name was Revo. And you can go on to uh, that website on Adam Motor Company. There was an effort done by an engineer to serve his country. And at that time, the Prime Minister, Shaukat Aziz, had promised me personally, what do you need here? What do you need there? I said, I don't need any special favors. I don't need any uh, reduction in sales tax. I do not need any grant. I do not need any loans from you. I can manage all that. But once I have launched that car, then I want you to put that car on the list of cars that the government of Pakistan buys because it's a new car.
it will need help and we will establish the brand and after that from the car if you go back to adam smith and you go back to the industrial revolution in this country you will know and you already know that an automobile industry played a great role in industrializing uk usa france and germany in the olden days of over 150 years ago to 100 years ago and now today in the last 50 60 years japan and korea have done the same thing so i wanted to emulate that uh, formula because a car industry they say engineering is the mother of all industries and if that is true then an automobile industry is the mother of engineering industries because it has got 20 different technologies in it anyway the government backed out i made 625 cars they are still running in pakistan and uh, i ran into a lot of financial problems i had to fight my my way out god has been very kind uh, i am one of the very very lucky persons and uh, i have to tell you this i do not come from a habib or a daud or a, uh, you know whatever the 20 other families and saifullahs and dasal and uh, sharifs and i did everything what i had to do in my life from a single penny when i left the country i had to borrow 300 dollars from my sister and i traveled six months in various buses and what not and then ended up wherever i ended up and by the time i was 28 i was a millionaire in us dollar terms by the time i and the other thing that my mother once told me when i took a lot of money and i'm giving you this 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 stories personal stories because i want to inspire you when i leave from here i want to convert you into excellent workers for pti because guys this is our last hope we are in very very bad situation nobody internationally respects us they laugh at us and we are still the entire families of our president and prime ministers as you know they are all busy in looting and plundering we need to save pakistan that is why i am telling you these stories so about a year and a half ago i was i got a call from dr arif alvi who i who was with me in dj uh, science college in karachi in 1960 6 65 66 67 and he said what are you doing and why don't you come and help us and there's that and then firdaus nakvi was also a founding member of pti and a very close friend of uh, chairman and a uh, very hard working guy he asked me to join and i said yes why not because i when dying i do not want to think that man i could have done little more so even though i was personally bankrupted almost and i had to dig myself out of the hole and i was very bitter and i used to tell my people ke maine kaha diya tha banna band kar diya hai main sirf business mein rehna chahta hu but then you know when you love something it takes you back you cannot not love your country it's like your mother so i said okay i'm going to work again and two to three months they said can you uh, take care of the think tank i said what is a think tank and uh, so what well. so i said okay mujhe to yahan tank shank nazar nahi aa raha hai tanki nazar aa rahi hai to wo choti si tanki thi wo maine uthai and i ran with it every time in my life if i've got an opportunity i pick the ball and i run so i said ki kahan ka hai think tank unhone kaha ji ek lahore mein ek islamabad mein ek irw bhi hai so i started to write to people and talk to them and i said has anybody from karachi gone to lahore to meet anyone no has anybody known what is lahore think tank doing no well how about islamabad he said they are even more remote i said well that's wonderful <laughs> so i said uh, to these guys okay give me three months and i want to uh, you know put a new life into it and let's uh i'll go to lahore i went to lahore and i got those guys together and how do you do what do you work and what not and there were four to five people there and then went to islamabad and then found out that they never had a meeting ever in their lives and they got everybody together and then i came back and we agreed that three months will be the time and we will write the first 100 days plan 
I went on a business trip and I came back and Dr. Arif Alvi calls me and he says to me, Feroz, uh, I have promised the chairman in the next 10 days we are going to the CEC with first 100 days plan. I said, what? I thought we had three months. And we just, you know, four months, oh, I mean, four weeks ago, so I, had, I have eight weeks. And they said, no, 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 no. We have to do this, and Chairman Sahib knows, and we are meeting in Islamabad. So, ladies and gentlemen, I went there and uh, took a guy from Lahore with me, one guy from Karachi. We three went, and in Islamabad, we sat for about four nights, up to three or four in the morning. There was lots of material available with us. There was material sent from IRW. There was some material from here and there. We needed to put it together and work it, and we had to rewrite and uh, you know make language better or whatever. We presented it. So it was a little room like this, and uh, uh, Hansa was sitting there. This is, you know, I'm a fan of cricket, but uh, uh, I never took personal interest in Imran Khan. So when I decided to join his party, I joined his party for his beliefs and for his work that he has already done. And that is what, if you know him personally and if you're his friends, great. But if you don't know him personally, it is still worth an effort. So what I did was, in order to know him, I picked up a book by Sanford, and it was Gora writer, so I said that he gave it to Khan Sahib that everyone should write it. So I said, okay. So I read that book. And then I got to know more about him. And then later on, when this new book came out on Pakistan, I read that. That was my first interaction. And I want to tell you this, uh, that our leader is great. Okay. He's great in the sense that this was a six-hour meeting. I was a brand new person for him. I was conducting that meeting. And uh, there were about 60 members from CEC. Or our CEC, like anywhere else, all sorts of people are there. In any CEC, in a political party in Pakistan, totally politically motivated people who have no concept of anything in terms of what is it, what is the meaning of a welfare state? What is big government? What is a small government? What is sovereignty? What is social development? What are women's rights? Why should women be given more importance than men in any society if that society has to become self-respecting? No, no clue. So we were kafi lede hui, jhagde hui, ye hua, wo hua. Khan sahab mahi baithe rahe. Hum log idhar baithe hui the. We were, I had uh, various groups of people and I was bringing uh, three people all the time uh, who were in related and we presented about 20 different areas. Education and health was sent back, and everything else was approved. Later on, we did education and health because this was turned out to be a very hotly debated item. So we took it back, and we got that also approved. Then I started to think about what if we really do get into power? OK, now, guys, this is all before October. The 30th October was the day when I was in Lahore and I want to give you this good news. I could not believe my eyes. Sharifs had given us Minare Pakistan. <laughs> and they said that there is no bloody way, sorry for my French, that we would be able to fill up this ground. And I have to tell you, Che Maine ke Bache se leke Asi Sal ke Bude tak. Or is Kadar Khawateen or Ye or Wo or Log Itne Umad Kiai Ke it was the sea ocean of people. And we had turned the corner. That was the day then from humiliation, from Tazleel, uh Fikre Kase Jate, Hamare Chairman Sape, Ye Azar Khan Banjayenge. Suddenly, people of Pakistan realize, and thanks here, it is like I say to people, Obama was the first black president to be elected to the United States, not because only Obama is good. Obama is very good. But his greatest friend was George W. Bush. He was such 
a low lying least thinking never got out of america a cowboy who became the president of america and then later on you saw and you guys had a prime minister here who was his poodle and then what did we do we have a fiasco in iraq and what not anyway coming back to this thanks to zardari and sharif brothers five times ppp has ruled our country and every time the level of governance has gone down and the level of corruption has gone up you guys agree with that similarly sharif brothers ruled this that uh, khana pina acha hai mithaiyan achhi hain paish hai tik thak phajje de paai bhi aande ne hai bhi honda hai but lekin sir governance forget about it so those people are the ones who finally made the people of pakistan sick and tired and they are ready for a change but now including mr zulfikar ali bhutto when he got into power they were not ready to govern so we thought what could we do for khan saab khan saab has got great record not only that he got us the only uh, world championship that you know in cricket but world cup but he also when he went back and set up this hospital and i been i went to this hospital to just really check out when i joined the party ke ye sari kahani baatein hain ya ye sacha hai and it's an excellently run place then when he got elected uh, from yawali he went and he promised those people that he'll set up a university he set up this university so the guy when he says i'll do this he does it then what happened was we had karachi and mqm and i'm from karachi i was very apprehensive i was one of those who actually was saying that karachi is premature abhi nahi karo but decision has been taken so we all worked hard and karachi became huge success and that put the seal pti is really a party to be reckoned with it's a political force then now you heard जैसे आसिम साहब ने बताया कि बलूचिस्तान में कोई नहीं ज़्यादा था डरते थे सब के वो मारा जाएगा ही जाएगा हमारा लीडर माशाल्लाह अल्लाह ताला उसको ज़िंदगी दे सौ साल की बहुत निडर आदमी है खान साहब को कहना पड़ता है कि खान साहब ये हर जगह आप इतना सारा खाना पीना शुरू कर देते हो यहाँ से निकाल के मतलब खान साहब काफ़ी ठीक ठाक खाते हैं माशा और वर्कआउट भी ठीक ठाक करते हैं यानी और इज़ लाइक सिक्सटी यानी रियली हिज बॉडी इज़ लाइक फोर्टी फाइव और वट He's a guy who really looks after himself and works very hard. So, uh, but he went there, and you saw that Koita me bhi kya hua. And KPK me, apko yaad hai ek dharna hua tha pish Karachi se pehle, jahan se unhone sari raat aur Khan Saab ko bas koi bester bester nahi tha, to wo subah char baje ke kareeb wo container pe soye bethe. so these are the good things then we said agar ag power mein aage to kya hoga to we said all right fine can you get to that where the expert groups are please so i thought ha huh, list of expert groups i thought what are the issues of pakistan okay for a common pakistani these are the issues of pakistan dashatgardi mehangai बेरोजगारी तालीम सेहत ना अब दहशत गर्दी में दिस इज फॉर ए कॉमन मैन कॉमन पर्सन फॉर एन ऑडियंस दैट आई हैव हेयर दहशत गर्दी और ऑल दिस इज स्टेमिंग आउट ऑफ सॉवरिटी ऑफ पाकिस्तान आर एक्सटर्नल थ्रेट्स आर आर इंटरनल थ्रेट्स आर एक्सटर्नल थ्रेट्स शुड बी डेल्ट विद बाई ए वेरी effective foreign policy and a foreign policy which is pakistan centric for which dictation does not come from washington or from here london then internal what are we doing to our country in terms of up to now we have not started to make a nation in terms of our thinking as pakistanis our identity and our problem with swat our problems in north waziristan south waziristan our problems in balochistan and it seems as if there is a hidden enemy 
which lies within ourselves. And this enemy has done some brainwashing on all of us and we are hating our own brothers and sisters and we are more respectful and more deferent and more giving to the foreigners than to our own people. And we are killing people. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for God's sake, think about for one second which Musliman will go or Jume ke wat namaz mein wo apne aap ko blow up kar de. Think. This does not appeal to common sense, but this is happening. So how low have we gone and how have we allowed these miscreants and these mischievous elements to really do this to us. So we thought what we need to do is, whether you talk about mashiat, whether you talk about samaji, rafahi, jo kuch bhi zaruriyat aapke mulk mein hai, agar aapke jaan aur maal mehfooz nahi rehega, to aapko comfort nahi hogi. So we thought sovereignty of Pakistan, you know, combating war on terror and other external threats, and then this has to be dealt with sound foreign policy. And within ourselves, we need to bring about real democracy and take it to the local government level. I have a brother here sitting from Wales. And he's an expert in local government. And he's driven all the way from Wales. And uh, we have just announced a policy on local government. We believe that the true democracy comes from that we take uh, the government to the lowest possible manageable unit, which could be a village or a tassil council or a town committee, in which the local people do their own governance. And a police inspector from uh, Peshawar doesn't have to go to Karachi. And a Karachi police inspector is not thrown somewhere in Quetta and a Quetta guy to sin. And he doesn't know who lives in what neighborhood and things of that sort. So that we came up. And then the uh, elementary education, health. And these are basic issues, community development, parks for the children. These are the kind of things that we need to be doing on a smaller unit. So we thought that is our second thing. Then the third thing, uh, this was one area. Then economic development. Now, all of you are running households, and all of you are uh, employed somewhere, and some of you are running your businesses. So I would like to draw your attention to your economic, for the ladies, your own economic unit. You need to budget. You need two th types of expenses. Ek aapka operational expense hota hai, jo आपके normal expenses को take care करता है और एक होता है अगर आपने कोई और बड़ी चीज करनी है you want to start a new business you want to have another initiative and all that so you need some capital expenditure in Pakistan what has happened is seven years ago our tax to GDP ratio was 12.5 percent India today has gone up to 18% while their economy has grown. Their GDP size there has grown. And we have gone down from 12.5% to 8.2%. Corruption. Lack of transparency. That's where we will get into e-governance and whatnot and all that. Okay. Now, we have an economy of $200 billion GDP. हमारा जो है अगर हम इसको 8.2 करते हैं तो लास्ट ईयर हमने 1.562 ट्रिलियन रुपया इकट्ठा किया टैक्स में यह होना चाहिए था मिनिमम मिनिमम 3.5 साढ़े 3 ट्रिलियन वी आर द लोएस्ट पेइंग नेशन इन टर्म्स ऑफ टैक्स लोएस्ट दिस इज व्हाट इज किलिंग अस व्हाट डज दिस डू some of us are becoming very, very rich. And for the rest of the people, we have no money for education, health, community development, women development. Uh, we cannot build railways. We cannot do any infrastructural projects and things. So we thought we need to increase tax revenue in five years. We want to take this 
from 8.2 to 20 percent in five years. Also, if our economy goes from 200 billion dollar at an approximate rate of 8 percent per year, you will calculate and you will find that we will be sitting somewhere at minimum, minimum 300 billion dollars. Now, 300 billion dollars अगर आज के हिसाब से देखा जाए तो आपकी जो 17 ट्रिलियन की इकोनॉमी है दैट विल गो टू 40 ट्रिलियन एंड आउट ऑफ 40 ट्रिलियन अगर आप उसका 20% ले आए देन यू डोंट नीड एनी वर्ल्ड बैंक यू डू नॉट नीड एनी आईएमएफ यू डोंट नीड एनी ग्रांट एंड वी विल ट्रूली बिकम लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन यू नो इट दैट इफ एन इंडिविजुअल अ फैमिली a community or a nation. If we cannot maintain our economic sovereignty, economic independence, we are bound to lose our political independence. When you borrow from a banker in a family and household and borrow too much, the banker owns everything that you have. That's exactly, that's how simple it is. So, if we can increase that, then we will take care of our operation cost. Then, I think the chakkar ho gaya. Ye galat aa gaya yahan pe. Ye asad yaan nahi hai. Ye upar hai. Foreign policy. Then second thing is, Achha, ye operation cost ho gaya. Now think as a business. Now we have capex chai. What is our asset? You remember Nawaz Shari sahab ne 28 mein 1998 ko atomic bomb explode kiya tha. उससे दो दिन पहले उन्होंने अपने फैमिली के सारे पैसे निकाल लिए थे और आप सब लोगों के और मेरे पैसे we lost thirty percent we lost thirty percent because of the बेमानी of one family and not only that we lost thirty percent forget about that Pakistan as a country lost its credibility among the best investors that Pakistan should have and that is the overseas Pakistanis so why I say that? I'm not here to kind of say this because you're overseas Pakistanis and I'm pleasing you. Uh, I'm kind of one of you. I used to live in the States for a very long time and I went back and I'm very happy I went back. <coughs> a bit crazy uh, and uh, I thought, you know, sooner or later you have to die anyway so you might as well die, you know, with both guns blazing. So I'm there with <laughs> both guns blazing. <laughs> And I almost died once and, uh, you know, to survive again and again, you know, whatever. So now, the deal is that if we, foreigners ask us, if a Pakistani is not going to invest in Pakistan, why the hell should I invest? Very reasonable. So we need to make a country which will make law and order good, safety good, we don't have anything wrong with our people. They, our people are very generous. They are very loving. They are very compassionate. They make greatest friendships. Jitne bhi ye bahar wale gore chore ye wo Pakistan mein aate hain, wo Japan se ye wo wapas jaate hain, kehte hain, wow, Karachi is great. But that happens after they have come to Pakistan. Oh, Lahore is such a historic place. Oh, guys, you have a country where all the three mountain ranges of the world meet together. There is no other country like that. This is great. हमें खाना भी आपका पसंद है, ये भी पसंद है। वो सब भी ठीक है। But leadership quality is terrible, and that is why we are here to change that. तो जब हमें ये बनाना हो जाएगा, तो I would like my dream is that from Karachi to Peshawar, or from Karachi to Lahore, no, maybe more understandable. Right now, it takes 24 hours for a train. We can do this in six hours. Sure. We can put a high speed train and we can make people sit with respect and uh, we can reduce this time and by building it, we will be providing hundreds of thousands of jobs. If we can start building, 8 million houses are short in Pakistan right now. If you build 2 million a year and accelerate it, we may be able to catch up now you just imagine 2 million by whatever the cost of the house, even if the government, which is what I am recommending to them, can give the lots and the tracts of land free. 
let the private sector come and let them build the house at the cheapest possible. Now you just look at people are thinking right now our GDP growth is going to be 2.5 percent. This is pathetic. This is terrible. India, uh, China, China has done for over 20 years. You all know in double digits, 10 percent. They have been able to convert out of 1.3 billion people. There are more than half which are now already middle class. So why can't we do it? People have India phobia about. You know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a Pakistani to the core maybe, and my view is that I can beat India hands down. But I need a Manmohan Singh, not Asif Radhari. <laughs> Look at the resume of the two. One is a pakka chore. <laughs> Unfortunately, we got the chore. Otherwise, to develop 180 million people is a piece of cake as compared to 1.2 billion. Think, guys, why are we all here and worrying about our country? Because it did not provide us those opportunities. Because our passport, you know, we have to be the last one. <laughs> Even those Arabs were arrogant and ignorant. And God was very kind to them. Unko oil soil mil gaya. Aur humare itne achche log hai. Unko free lottery khul gayi unki. Karachi ka PIA ka plane aayega. Jadda mein kahenge piche chale jao. Unse ka Makkah Madine aayi hai. Kahte Makkah Madine saath le jao. This is how arrogant those Arabs are. And our people go out of love of religion and God. And this is what we get treated. We need to change that. How do we change that? By doing this. Then jobs. How will we create jobs? You will start infrastructural projects. You teach uh, people, I'll come to that uh, thing, inflation will be automatically controlled by developing infrastructure and controlling the loss of rupee and dollar parity. I remember when I set up my first plant factory in 1988, I opened the LC, it was 18 rupees to a dollar in 1988. And now it is 90, 500 times. The same machine, if the foreign supplier had did not raise the price even 1%, would be five times more expensive. So we have inflation. Then energy sector reforms. Uh, we have come out with a policy. We need to do three, four things on energy sector. This sector is, by the way, is as important as this or this. And at times I say this is even more important than this. Because na paya factory ka chalega, na ghar ka chula jalega, kuch bhi nahi hoga. Na rail chalegi, na jahaz chalega, na gadi chalegi agar hum ne energy sahi nahi kare. Aur energy sahi ho sakti hai. There are three, four things. We need to do some uh, conversion from, you know, to uh, coal-fired units, we need to go from 6 to 7 to 35 percent, and we can do that on much lesser money. And then we need to go on hydel, and we need to go do a little alternate energy. Uh, you know, nowadays this is Kavisab uh, for just so that you know you will drive some comfort. Okay, हमने काफी मेहनत की इसमें. जो आपके biogas और इससे जो tube wells जो आपके चल रहे हैं ना agriculture, mein, they take up about 2,000 megawatt. We can convert them. For little houses, we can go on to uh, solar. solar. We do solar panel and pani garam karna to baad asaan. Koi masla nahi hai. Lekin ek bulb, ek pankha, gharib ke ghar mein, aur ek wo chota wala quarter jiski mein baate kar raha hon, usko maam move kar dein. Aur mahi kahi chota da primary school ho, aur wo bachiyo ko leke kaha jai ke, bibi aap aayye aake haan padhaiye. Or unko kuch izzar di jai. So we can change all that. And people are, again I am telling you, people are wonderful. Then industrial revolutions and increase the storage capacity of water. This we have started a program. Iska mein naam change kar diya hai. Iska naam hai ab water, resource, development and management. India is playing big games with us here. But we can counter it. Uh, and we are working on this. Then there is banking. Do you know what is going on right now? Who is the most profitable, which is the most profitable sector in Pakistan? That's commercial banks. You know why? Because there is a cohort of corruption. 
billions and billions and billions of rupees of the banks of the government are sitting with commercial banks. We are coming up with a policy that not a single penny of government money should be with commercial banks. It should be directly sitting with state banks. And through e-governance, all the projects and all the work and whatever is going on will be directly transferred from a state bank to that contractor. And we are working on those programs. Next. Then we come to what our party stands for. Our party stands for a welfare state. And among other things in welfare state, this is in the same uh, priority order. Uh, I am sorry to say this to you, and I am so angry at what our generations have done to Pakistan that for the last 65 years, the rich, uh, and I am one of the guilty ones, uh, I, send, I could manage to send my kids to American schools, so I did. There are some people who send their children to grammar school, they did. There are some people who went to foundation and city and blah, 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 and uske baad, ye humne cover kar liya about 15-20% and the rest, 85%, we abandoned them. We simply abandoned the poor children of Pakistan thinking that they are nothing and they, nobody realized that this is what is going to make our nation. So out of necessities, mothers are cropped up. Out of the jahalat, the untrained and not knowledgeable about the religion and the human values, these mullahs, they started to use and abuse our children. And they brainwashed them. They brainwashed them out of despondency, desperation, and no hope. They brought them to a stage where they are willing to tie or wear these jackets and blow themselves up. Nobody in sane mind does that. They are not our enemies. They are our children. Even those people, suicide bombers who are killing <coughs> themselves, they are among us. Whether they have been bribed or they have been given some other uh, brainwashing, it can happen. It happened during the Second World War. It happened a lot of other times. That is what is happening. So what we need to do is, we need to give education. I personally have taken the task of writing education policy and I've got about 25, 40 people and I'll be traveling very soon to Lahore, we'll have a seminar there, we'll have a seminar there. I really believe that along with education, we need to emphasize, let me give you our statistics, which is pretty pathetic. Overall Pakistanis, out of 1,000 children, in elementary school, five years ke jo bache hain, five or nine years ke bache, usme se thousand bachon mein se four to school jaate hi nahi, six jaate. And by the time wo secondary school se graduate hote hain, wahan pe two reh jaate. Aarat hai. So even if you were to say that an eleven-year-old, and it was very interesting to see this morning, I think. Times may may parda tha ke kuch yahan pe bhi literacy pe pada masla ho raha hai. Eleven year old is cannot really be uh, as literate as they want in England. But this is a serious serious issue. That what are we doing then? We are working in reverse order. We are increasing illiteracy. Right now our uh, illiterates are 49 to 50 percent. But you see the dropouts from the primary to uh, girls. To start with, वो जो जाहिल लोग हैं, वो अपनी बच्चियों को स्कूल नहीं भेजते। और जैसी बच्चियां 10-11 साल की होती हैं, तो वो कहते हैं, हो 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 हो, उनको घर में रखो। And among other things, their religious beliefs and there is lack of infrastructure, law and order situation. Some of them are right. They 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 do not want their little girls to be abducted and abused. But that's what is going on. We need to change that. We are only spending 1.8% of our GDP on education. I would like to take it to 8%. Uh, everyone is, that's where I'm finding a lot of resistance. Uh, 
uh, but they've agreed to 5%, but I'm just quietly not telling them, <laughs> I'm sharing it with you, that uh, if our uh, GDP is uh, 17 to 20, 17 trillion now, if my GDP will be 40 trillion, then 5% of 40 trillion is going to be a lot of money and uh, will be much better than what we are 8% because they are now kind of lost in the numbers <coughs> and whatnot. So then we need uh, help. Again, the same problem. Our infant mortality rate has gone down, but our death during birth for the women is the worst in the world. So what we are suggesting to the party is that every uh, health unit in any community will have a 24-hour emergency little ambulance and with uh, the so that they can go home, either deliver the baby home right there or bring uh, the mothers to the community hospital and have uh, the babies delivered there in the hospital because right now there is no concept. Abhi jo hamare basic health unit hai, usme kisi ne to ye to concept hi nahi hai. Lekin jo baaki concept hai basic health ka, uske andar kisi ne bakriyan bandhi hui, kisi ne gaye bandhi hui, kisi ne bhaise bandhi hui. Doctor sab kam kya hai? Masti, bal full. Koi puchne wala nahi hai. Ye Gilani sab ki aur ye in tamam logon ki constituencies mein ye ho raha hai. So, uh, we want to uh, focus on that, community development, let's go further on improved governance. We want, ye mushkil hai not crack karna, lekin hum bar bar keh rahe hai un logon ko aur ke, guys, we will have to give up our Mercedeses and we will have to give up our land cruisers. Can you sit in locally assembled cars? Now, locally assembled cars in our country are not as bad as they used to be. We are making good quality cars. I am in that industry, so I know that now to it a Corolla, Honda Civic, you will be able to get it. You will be able to get it. You will be able to get it. But in Bachao, it will be tough not to crack. If you are an Indian leader, ambassador, you will be able to get it. We will be able to get it. But we will be able to get it. We will be able to get it. We will be able to get it. पहले फ्रॉम 47 में हम लोगों ने अभी तक खत्म नहीं किया ये हमारा प्रॉब्लम है इंशाल्लाह उसको ही हमें खत्म करना है देन वी नीड जुडिशियल रिफॉर्म पुलिस रिफॉर्म देन इक्वालिटी फॉर माइनॉरिटीज माइनॉरिटीज का तो जिक्र ही नहीं है मेरे भाई ने जिक्र किया था देखें हम लोग पता है हो क्या रहा इवन इन एजुकेशन आई विल शेयर दिस विद यू द रिसर्च शोस दैट ए चाइल्ड लर्न्स द बेस्ट in his or her mother tongue during the first few years of his life. Up to elementary, basic concept. If a Balochi is a child, then the first four years will study in Balochi. If a Sindhi is a child, then it will study in Sindhi. If a Punjab is a very common in Punjab, then it will study in Punjab. There is a certain part of it. In this way, the second research shows that nobody should argue with. And that is that a child is capable of learning simultaneously up to three languages. This is not a research done only in Pakistan, but the best academicians in the world and anthropologists in the world are saying that. The third research shows that the after religion, the most important uh, influence on a person's culture or thinking is language. You think in a language. <coughs> Either you think in English or you think in French or you think in Arabic, you think in Urdu, you think in Punjabi. I have written my education policy and it's a democratic party and we do fight and we argue. And that's good. Because everybody should be not saying one thing and everybody dictating and everybody says, okay, okay. That's not how it should work. So, I have requested this policy to people that we have to do this. That we start the three languages first. We start the children who are the mother tongue. And by the time you go to sixth grade, middle school, all of the medium of instruction is English. 
and I start English language from first grade as, as a subject. <coughs> Only as a subject. By the time you go to sixth grade, then convert it. Why? If you go to Pakistan, I will give you an example of nations. Example Singaporeans, hai, Malaysians, hai, Filipinos. Hai. आपको अगर पाकिस्तान में हैं और अगर आपको एक मेड घर के में चाहिए और वो अंग्रेजी नहीं बोलती तो उसको आप 5000 से 8000 रुपए में हायर कर लेंगे महीने लेकिन अगर अंग्रेजी बोलने वाली मेड है तो वो 20000 से कम में नहीं आएंगे और अगर अंग्रेजी बोलने वाला ड्राइवर है तो मैंने लोगों से कहा तुमने गरीबों के साथ क्यों ड्रामा किया इनको भी सिखा दो अंग्रेजी लेकिन वो फ्यूडल जो है ना वो कहते हैं ये खड़ा हो जाएगा और ये कहेगा आई वांट माय राइट्स and that's exactly what we want. We want everybody to stand up and say, I want to stand and be counted. So, these things are going on. We will come up with, inshallah, a good one. And uh, so, minority, I'm talking about minority. Look, Qaeda Azam, when we made Pakistan, bana tha na, to, yes, it was meant because economic survival of Muslims against Hindus was impossible. That was and he used that as a slogan, but when he came to Pakistan, Pakistan ban gaya. So then he also delivered. I want to add to what he said. I'm not disagreeing with what he said. I'm adding to that. And it's very important that everyone understand that I'm only adding. That he said, okay, now you're free to go to your mosques and temples and wherever, your places of worship, and you will be given equal rights. So tolerance in a society is very, very important. So what I'm saying is, there are a issues uh, Christians and Hindus and, uh, you know, feeling really the brunt of a lot of it. And there are some laws which may require to be changed. So guys, this is what it is, all of it. Uh, I don't think that I have group that I so, I have a lot of artists who have come up with reference. Now, what is the reference? So that you know. If we have a lot of people who have come up with a lot of people who have come up with a lot of people who have come up with a lot of people who have come up with a lot of people who have come up with a lot of people who have come up with a lot of people who have come up with जितने भी पढ़े लिखे लोग हैं या नहीं पढ़े लिखे लोग हैं सबसे कहें कि पॉलिटिकली एक्टिव हो जाओ अगर हम नहीं एक्टिव हुए तो वी विल यू नो रियली लूज तो दिस इज द कंप्लीट स्ट्रक्चर एंड वी गिव ए टर्म ऑफ रेफरेंस एंड वी थॉट सेड के आप हम लोग पावर में आ गए दिस इज आई हैव अ फीलिंग कि शायद इलेक्शन अक्टूबर में हो जाए अगर नहीं भी हुए अक्टूबर में जरदारी साहब करेंगे वो सरप्राइज पोल करेंगे तो लेकिन अगर मार्च में भी हुए नेक्स्ट ईयर तो फ्रॉम मार्च इफ वी गेट इनटू पावर एंड वी आवर रिक्वेस्ट फ्रॉम थिंक टैंक्स यू सी थिंक टैंक इज नॉट आई एम नॉट अ पॉलिसी फाइनलाइजर दैट इज एन वर्ड आई एम अ पॉलिसी रिकमेंडर आई गिव 3 4 ऑप्शंस फ्रॉम आपका आईआरडब्ल्यू से आते हैं लाहौर से आते हैं यहां से आते हैं हम सीईसी को देते हैं सीईसी और चेयरमैन साहब बैठ के वहां एक पॉलिसी विंग और क्रिएट किया है नया जिसमें जहांगीर तरीन साहब इस हेड इन है सो वी गिव ऑल दिस इनपुट टू जहांगीर तरीन साहब एंड वी फाइनलाइज दिस आपस की इसके बाद ये सीईसी में जाता है सीईसी में जब अप्रूव होता है तो फिर दैट इज कॉल्ड फिर उसके बाद हम पब्लिक और मीडिया में जाते हैं सो दैट इज आवर प्रोसेस ठीक है